Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel! After testing the KTM 890 Adventure in the last video, I was curious to test another KTM model during the KTM Street Roadshow. This time it's going to be the 1290 Super Duke GT. If this is your first visit to the channel, my name is Roy and this is Motorvlog NL. We are yet again back at Motorport in Rocagne on the island of Forneputte, just below Rotterdam. And I'm currently riding the KTM 1290 Super Duke GT. As you can see in front of me, these KTM models have a different license plate than in the video last week, where I got on the 890 Adventure that had Dutch license plates. If you haven't seen that video, I will put a link on top of the screen. KTM had a selection of bikes that are registered here in the Netherlands, but also brought in a bunch of bikes to test that were registered in Austria, where KTM headquarters is located. The KTM 1290 Super Duke GT has an aggressive and naked look to it, but it is considered a sports tourer. It can be placed next to the Kawasaki Ninja 1000SX that I tested recently. I wasn't particularly fond of that bike, so I was interested if the KTM could surprise me, and it did. Where the Ninja 1000SX could fit me pretty well, the KTM was a completely other story. The bike looks compact, but bulky. But from the start I had trouble placing my feet on the pegs and as a result I was un almost unable to control the gear shifter. And that resulted in a fairly uncomfortable ride. To be able to shift up and down I had to remove my foot almost completely off the peg and had to position myself on the bike in a way that wasn't that comfortable and to be honest also not that safe. So the KTM 1290 Super Duke did surprise me, but not in a good way I guess. During the duration of this test ride, I struggled to ride the bike like I'm used to do. Cornering the bike on small roads scared the crap out of me. And at several points in the ride, I wanted to stop, turn around and get the bike back to the dealership. Is the KTM 1290 Super Duke GT a bad bike? No, it isn't. It might be the best bike for you, but for me, it was a scary experience. Also, it didn't help that it started raining during the test ride. The KTM 1290 Super Duke GT is equipped with Continental Contisport Attack 4 tires, 
and although they are recommended by KTM for this bike, I am more of a Bridgestone fan. The Continental tires had enough grip in both dry and wet conditions, but it's not my favorite brand of rubber. On the KTM website they advertise the bike as a comfortable ballistic missile, and I can partly agree with that. It sure feels like a ballistic missile. But comfort was not one of the things that came to mind while riding this bike. The 1290 Super Duke GT has a 1300cc V-twin engine that delivers 175 horsepower. The engine is extremely responsive and is lightweight due to the use of titanium parts. The engine has a raw sound to it and if you are into those sounds you will definitely get what you paid for. The chassis of the bike is made to be light and durable in the form of a tube frame. And the bike is designed to go out on the road for long rides even with a pillion and the option to mount panniers. The bike is equipped with a semi-active electronically adjustable suspension that you can set with the touch of a button. The bike has three modes to choose from. Comfort, Street and Sport. And you also have the option to take into account if you have a passenger on the back. This can be changed on the 7 inch TFT color screen in front of you, but I will get back to that later on in the video. The KTM 1290 Super Duke GT has a 23 liter fuel tank and with a fuel consumption of 5.7 liters per 100 kilometers, which is just over 1 to 17 and a half, you will get about 400 kilometers out of the tank of fuel, which is actually not bad. The 1290 Super Duke GT has a seat height of 835 millimeters. And according to several tests I have read and seen, it should be the perfect bike for taller people, but I disagree with that. For me, the bike was way too small and the position of the foot pegs were high up. To be fair, I do have long legs and I am a European size 46 in shoe size, so it's all relative of course. But if you are looking into a bike like this, you will have to take that into account. The look of the bike is nice and I really liked it. It screams KTM, that's for sure. It kind of reminded me of a Hornet with the long pointy headlight and its aggressive stance. The GT is finished with graphics and paint that are exclusive to the GT version, so that's cool. In the 890 Adventure video I have talked about the electronics on the bike. The bike is delivered on a demo mode and after 1k of open road, poof, everything disappears. And you can buy back the features by upgrading the firmware at your dealer. For the 1290 Super Duke GT it's the same deal. If you want to keep your quick shifter plus, or the hill hold control, or the motor slip regulation, or if you're interested in the track pack, you will have to pay extra. The base price of the bike is set at 25,600 euros, and with all the software enhancements that I just mentioned before, you can buy the tech pack for almost 1,200 euros. Let's talk about the 7 inch TFT color dashboard on the bike. The screen is nice and large and easy to read, but for some reason it kept going back into the settings screen instead of staying on the selected riding screen, where you can see your speed and RPM in full frame. Maybe it was a result of me doing something wrong by using the wrong buttons, but controlling the screen through the buttons on the handlebars didn't feel quite intuitive to me. At some point I left it for what it was and just accepted the fact that the screen and I weren't on the same page. I will say, the graphics on the screen looked awesome. If I could get it to work, like it's intended, it could truly benefit the rider. The buttons on the handlebar on the other hand felt really flimsy and cheap. And for a bike that is over 25k, I would have expected a better finish and some heavier materials. But on the other hand, they do function. The indicator switch was somewhat hard to get to, since there is a large control switch right above it. All in all the KTM 1290 Super Duke GT can definitely be the bike for you. And KTM fanboys and girls will probably disagree with me, but in my opinion this is not to be considered a sports tourer. It is a naked bike that is able to fit panniers. I do understand the love that people have for the KTM brand and the Super Duke. Like I said, for the Red Rider, this can be heaven on earth. For me, it was definitely not. If you made it this far into the video and you appreciated my honest personal opinion, please leave a like. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. And if you also click on the bell icon, YouTube will send you a notification every time I upload a video. If you would like to let me know what your opinion is on the 1290 Super Duke GT, or if you agree or disagree with me, leave a comment down below. 
Also check out my website if you would like to test ride one of the KTM models yourself. On the event page you can find upcoming events of KTM and other brands in the Netherlands where you can test your favorite brand and models. And if new events pop up to my radar they will be added to the event page. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!